Ella Price raised her eyes to heaven and begged deliverance. It was a hot South Carolina day at the end of June 1997, the kind tourists love and natives abhor. She was stuck on the approach to Fenton Bridge after a long trip upstate to buy belts and handbags for her dress shop. All the way home, she'd thought how grand it would be to sit on her back porch and revel in the caress of a cooling island breeze. Now she wondered if she'd ever get there. She studied what she could see of the drawbridge ahead. It had been locked straight up and open for the last 20 minutes, with no repair vehicles in sight. Experience taught that she might be trapped for an hour or more, so she turned off her engine to save gasoline. The papers said the new suspension bridge would be completed by the millennium, but that was three years away. Even though building the new bridge would bulldoze poor folks' homes on either side of the river, at this moment, Ella had to think it would be a good thing. She rolled down her window. The air was heavy and still. The river sparkled in the sun. People left their cars for relief, and she did too. Looking around, she saw Roland Fenton, a dapper black man 30 years of age, a restaurant manager whose family had once been owned by the Confederate general for whom the drawbridge had been named in 47, 50 years ago. Ella Price was born Ella Sassaport, a surname her people acquired from their owners as well. She'd gone to grade school with Roland's mama back in segregation days. The two waved and made faces of misery at each other. A slender young white man standing three cars between them mistook her gesture for one aimed at him. His long, thin face arranged its features into a similar expression of distress, then smiled. Raised to be polite, Ella smiled back. A young woman exited his car. She was a remarkable creature, fulfilling every criteria for beauty the entire white world held dear. Unmarred porcelain skin, deep blue eyes, chiseled cheeks and jaw, an admirable nose, sumptuous lips. Her hair was black and thick, her legs long and shapely, her belly flat, and her bust high and generous. She dashed through the line of stopped cars to the railings at the foot of the bridge, bending over the uppermost to regard the river below. Drivers all around stared as she did. Sirens wailed. Repair trucks with a police escort at the bottom of the bridge threaded through stalled traffic to make their way slowly to the engineer's booth. People re-entered their cars and revved them up to try to give the trucks a path. The young man called out to his beauty, Abigail, come here. <laughs> 